years. I taught kindergarten for 10 years. I worked on curriculum, the Cree language curriculum for two years and or a year and a half. And I've worked with the Cree language for four years now as a Cree language instructor. Please describe your program. What called age groups target audience, aim of the program, and the learning objectives and your opinion that makes it um, excellence in Indigenous education. My program is a Cree language program, Nehiawewin in our language is how we say it. And I use the ASLA developed by Dr. Stephen Gray Morning. ASLA stands for Accelerated Second Language Acquisition. The age group that it that it's targeted towards is grade one to grade six. I currently teach it to the grade sixes only. I also do um, land-based education with grade threes and basically that's just going out and mother nature is is our teacher. We just go out on the land and we learn. We sit and observe a bug. We sit and observe a tree or we sit and just feel the wind and then the kids make note and tell me of what they felt, how was it warm, cold and stuff like that. Just learning to um, connect to Mother Earth and to nature and to understand and know how to read it I guess and, and feel it. Yeah, The aim of the program, the it using the ASLA, I, I actually use ASLA in, in the land-based program as well. The aim and goal of it is to develop fluent Cree speakers. What Dr. Stephen Gray Morning developed with his ASLA program is you start with it, you teach in sets and you use and you use only visuals and the oral language. So the first set is 16 nouns, and those 16 nouns consist of four people, four animals, four transportation and for in reference to animacy, um, animate and inanimate. So that that's your set one. And then you move on to set two, and set two introduces connectors first. It teaches you how to connect two nouns in in a sentence, a man and a a man and a woman, like that in, in the language. And then you go into plurals and you're required to teach four connectors and extend them to eight and then um, the plurals you teach 12 plurals 12 to 16 plurals and then you go into the next set which is verbs you teach verbs in a singular form and then you teach verbs you start to introduce verbs in a plural form and then it goes into set four it goes on like that so it teaches you colors and numbers but you're not not through um, counting you're not counting like you're not going one two three four you're showing a picture with four dots on it and you have to be able to say four when you see it and and not and not count those four dots so it teaches you numbers out of order and so that when you see when you see six horses in a field, you're able to say six horses instead of you know count them. But in the target language, so you would say nikutasik misatimok. You know when you saw that picture of six horses in a field, you'd be able to to think in the language using a number and a noun and pluralizing it all at once, right? Um, and then it goes on. It extends it. It extends the set five and six that go to um, clothing. You learn about clothing. You start from the basic like shirt, pants, jacket, shoe, boot, and then you extend those and you go in and and learn about sewing. You learn the terms like sewing. You learn how uh, the verb putting on a jacket, taking off. Um, your shoe, so you learn those terms in, in the target language as well, using visuals and only visuals, and you can apply and use TPR, total physical response, where you actually bring, take off your shoe and put on your shoe, you know, so I do that as well. So that's one way that I've adjusted it 
for me is by using TPR. I include TPR in it and and then it goes in where clothing and then it goes into foods foods so you go into foods and you you teach um the traditional foods first of the target language and then where do we get these foods from so you're extending it from foods to where do you get these foods from you hunt so you're teaching them about you're teaching them verbs and and that the traditional and traditional hunting skills like how to hunt emotit and so you're teach you're teaching terms like tracking an animal and aiming at the animal shooting that animal skinning that animal and then um, butchering that animal and drying the meat and frying the meat and boiling it so all of those different phrase phrases come in into play and then the the colors you work that in with the food as well which is fruit and that's a set of its own because traditionally we we picked a lot of fruit like the raspberries the blueberries the strawberries and they are colors right so you say blue um red a mikwagi ayoskana red raspberries so you're not teaching the color in isolation you're teaching it with 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 the noun of of the berry eh? because they shouldn't they should already know color at at a certain grade we shouldn't be teaching it rote memory anymore right and then i work in liquids because liquids is is kind of um a topic of its own because of the fact that it has that certain ending because of the suffix that a that a liquid has in our language so i teach those in isolation and drinking spilling pouring so you, you get those verbs in there as well so you're always adding verbs and if you can get through that program which is um uh, right now we haven't achieved it because it's still very new we're in our third year this is our fourth year and we continue to adjust it because like the grade threes have been exposed to it, um, the kids that are in grade six now have had this program since grade three. So now in grade six, I'm having to adjust it more each time. So instead of adding two um, two verbs that relate to to food and cooking in grade two. I'm adding 12 you know so it's constantly changing that's where the assessment is changing and hopefully in another year I always said five years that then we'd have this program set eh? um, but that's basically how it goes and you can use any verbs or nouns in your language throughout those sets in any of those sets but it's the first set that's very important that you stick to four people. Those are your four nouns, your four your four transportation, your four animals, and and your animacy for for animacy. It's successful because it dictates. It makes you work with four, and you take and you take and find animals that are native to your area. Like I wouldn't teach about, I wouldn't put an elephant up there because it's from Africa and we don't even have a term for it in our language. It's, there's a term has been made. So like in the area that we're in, a bear was very common. We're name, our name, the community is Musquachis, right? So Musqua. Buffalo was our livelihood. So I teach Buffalo. Ermine skin is a ermine sikos. So I teach that because it's, it's got a lot of significance and important to the kid importance to the kids. They the kids need to know what a ermine skin is and how it relates to our name and the history of our people. And then what's the last one I do? A moose. Because moose a moose swa is something we lived off of. It provided for us as well, eh? Another um characteristic or aspect that makes this ASLA program work is the fact that there is so much repetition 
like when you're teaching one new word, whether it's a noun or a verb phrase, and you have 24 kids in the classroom, you're te you teach it to them first, they're listening, you say it two times, three times, four times, and then you have them repeat after you because they've heard it, and they're fine-tuning their ear to your sound, to the sound system of the target language while, while they're listening, and then they're, by the time you get them to say it, they're able to say it without any problems. And then they come up, they rotate, and each child has to come up, each student has to come up and go through that new word or those four new words, those four new pictures. So by the time the class is over um, and you have 20 kids in there and each kid has said it, I've said it and each child, so that's two times two times 22, that's 44, and then I said it four times before that. So by the time they leave the class, they've heard those four new phrases almost 50 times. And there's that repetition. Repetition is what makes it stick and work. <laughs> so, yeah. um, what are the program's learning objectives? Oh, that would be, like, the, le the ultimate learning objective is, is to develop fluent Cree speakers and to have the children thinking in in the language, in the target language, which is the Cree language, that they be able to think in it and speak in it at by the time they leave grade six. It's partially used in our high school too, but I'm not sure how extensive they use it, eh? What in your opinion makes it an example of excellence in indigenous education? The fact that it forces the children to think in the target language. I think that's what makes it a successful and excellent program. And the fact that the, the teacher who is instructing it has to use the language and stay in the language and not once translate any of what she's teaching in the language into another language and always staying in the target language, which in my case is um, the Cree language, Nehiawewin. How do you measure the success of your program? The success is measured through benchmarks. I, I've created assessment tools such as benchmarks, which we we test on every year. Every, no, every year for grade twos and grade fives, we have certain measures where, say, like for grade two, by the time they get to grade two, the kids are expected to learn twenty four nouns and and twelve verbs. But within that, they have to know how to use those nouns in singular form and in plural form. And they also have to know how to use those nouns with connectors such as and, in which in our language is egwa. And they have to know how to use those verbs in singular form and in plural form and also with connectors. And they also know have to know how to use the pronouns, demonstrative pronouns, like this is and that is, and when in our language it's been termed as animacy, where they learn how to use awa and oma in relation to the noun that they're they're using. So just knowing when to use proper term awa or oma, there's there's a term for them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure it's um, demonstrate dem demonstrative pronoun I'm pretty sure that's what it is <laughs> but like I said I don't concern myself with that stuff eh? but I and I know I should and then of course we assess quarterly we we assess every semester so we have within each for each semester we have an assessment tool that that we use that measures the kids comprehension level like do they understand the lang do they understand when i say not be awa do they understand that i'm saying this is a man and can they tell and and when i point to the picture can they say it to me in the language and can they can they properly say it when i point this is a man will they say not be awa which is the correct answer or will they say isquail awa? So we're we're assessing comprehension that way, and then we also have a section in that test 
where we're, we're assessing the application. Can they give me a sentence of their own using the, a noun and a verb that's not displayed as a pictorial phrase on, on the wall? Say we have all these pictures of a man standing, a man walking, a bear running, but we don't have a picture of a woman in any of them. Can the child come back to me and say, when I ask them to create their own phrase and sentence, can they come back to me and say, because they already know the the noun woman and the noun bird, can they say, a woman is running even though they haven't seen that picture yet so taking what they already know and applying it to different visual in, in their own mind so it forces them and makes them think in, in, in the target language, the Cree language and so we have say like in the first term the grade fives have to know what do we have for them they have to know 34, 36 nouns, 38 nouns, sorry. Grade fives have to know 38 nouns for the course of, 48 nouns for the course of the year. So we break those 48 nouns into the three semesters. And then there's the final assessment that comes with, with everything on it. Well, not everything, but certain ones. So those, those 48 nouns are broken and broken up and taught into um, each semester. Same with the verbs. We are in grade six, they have to know 48 verbs and they have to know them in singular and plural and know how to apply them and use them. So same thing. From your perspective, what is Indigenous education? Indigenous education to me is learning, is being taught in our own language and learning about our own culture and our own history as opposed to learning, being taught in a foreign language, the English language, and being taught about English concepts and English perspective, English life, English world views. Indigenous education to me means that we as Indigenous people, First Nation people, teach our own worldviews and our own history in our own language and that they not be taught inside of four walls and that it be taught on the land and outside like it was five, six hundred years ago before European contact. What is your vision for Indigenous education over the next ten years? My vision is that we are able to take control. We do, to a certain extent, have control of our own education on the First Nation, on, on the reserves. However, it's still being dictated as to what we can teach. We have to teach those six core subjects, English, science, social, math. My vision of it is that be pushed away and that we come up with our own topics or core subjects in relation to who we are as First Nations people. Like we need our language again, our culture again, and again it needs to be outdoors. And we Indigenous um, education also needs to be coming from our own people with the help and guidance the whole way through from elders. In this day and age, our world is so multicultural, it's so diverse, we have so many cultures and so many different races in our world today that we still need to um, have a balance and be able to function and communicate in two languages and in two worlds, which is basically what we are, um, the First Nation, the indigenous world, and then the European or the modern, um, the American European. <laughs> so I just wanted to, to add that. You know, we, we still need to be able to learn the English language and how how the English, uh, how how the Western or 
the modern Western societies function and their their rules and everything just for the sake of um, history not repeating itself and that loss of communication and then not being able to communicate right like it did happen in history and we just don't want to repeat history in this way if we're both educated in in the western world and in the indigenous world then that communication will always be there what information and materials resources do you need to achieve that vision aside from funding we would need to be able to gather that knowledge from our elders, those elders who are the knowledge keepers of, of the language and the culture who are, you know, the ones that are that aren't going to be here with us much longer. We need to seek them and get their permission to document or record their knowledge so that we can make curriculum out of it eh? so that it can guide us in creating our, our own curriculum. So we need to make our own curriculum. That would be like the material, <laughs> the material and the resources. We would probably need, not probably, I know we would need because it's very hard to take field trips and go to certain areas to be able to teach them about the river. We don't have a big clean river like we do in the mountains we don't have that here in Muscochis so we would need like a designated area where some of our plants and herbs still grow that are important to us so that we could take the kids there the children there so we would need designated land I guess or land areas where we could do a lot of our land-based learning and I know buses and stuff like that would fall under funding, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so we'd need that transportation. We'd need that transportation to be able to deliver a program like land-based learning because we we picked and gathered roots not just in the area we lived in. We traveled back and forth across this land, like from the Great Lakes to the Rocky Mountains and in between along the way, we always gathered and traded and picked roots because they didn't grow in the region that we lived or whatever, right? So that kind of knowledge, that kind of a resource is something you need transportation for. <laughs> yeah.